So today I want to talk about how I'm planning to overwinter my pepper plants. I'm very excited to do this because we don't have a very long or a very warm growing season. We just put in our hoop house in the backyard. So my pepper plants didn't have that great of a year this year, but I'm hoping that next year they can. And in order to help ensure that, I am going to overwinter them to give them a bit of a head start. I just came back from digging up a few peppers from the hoop house. I planted two varieties this year of bell peppers. So King of the North and Ace. It's an F1 hybrid that I got from Johnny Seeds. Um, King of the North, I think you can also get at Johnny Seeds. I got mine at Baker Creek. These are both uh, early producing bell peppers, which is good for our short and cold climate here. Just want to see if you know either of the varieties takes better to uh, overwintering. And this is my first time doing it, so I'm not 100% sure like how well it's gonna go. I have high hopes for it, and if not, then whatever. I'll still be starting peppers from seed next year. And I'm sure they'll be able to do better next year anyways, because they'll have the hoop house for the whole season. So here, the varieties that I um, I already pulled them out. So what I did already was I dug them out of their spots in the greenhouse. They were already kind of root bound to begin with. I cut off the tops of a few and I'm gonna prune them up a lot more. I just figured I'd come inside and do it indoors. And then after I dug them out, I rinsed off the soil from their roots and that's because I'm gonna be using new potting soil. So best practice would be to use it from a newly, a freshly opened bag. My big bag of Pro Mix has been open for a little bit. I think it'll be okay, but if you're, but if you're more keen to stop any pests from coming inside, or if you're worried that your soil might have diseases that might affect the plant in the next year, then it's better to go with a freshly opened bag of soil. So a good time to be digging your pepper plants up for overwintering is when the overnight temperatures get to a low of 45 degrees or mid 40s. Last night it was at 40 degrees for us. Actually in the hoop house I'm sure it was a little bit warmer. I'm actually not sure about the nighttime temperatures. I haven't checked um, the lows and highs in the hoop house for a little while now but they seem healthy enough. I'm glad because in the heat of the summer, my pepper plants experienced a lot of bug damage. They were just swarmed with aphids, which is one of the reasons they didn't perform well. So that's also why I rinsed off the soil from my plants, just in case there's any eggs in the soil. I'm also gonna be spraying these down with neem oil. But first I wanna show you how I'm gonna be pruning my peppers. You really only want to leave a few main stems. I'll just take this off of the pot and let me get my pruners. So first actually, I am just gonna disinfect my pruners quickly. Um, even though I don't think, you know, I fully decontaminated any of my plants from what I've been doing, you can be a lot more rigorous about it. Just rubbing mine with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And then, well, first I'm gonna remove all the leaves. So your plants definitely should have no leaves on them, but not just all the leaves. And to make this quicker, I am gonna remove a few big stems. Really what I want is maybe just two or three um, of the main stems coming out um, and making it look like a very bare tree. So let me prune this one and I'll show you what I mean. So here is what I am left with. I just really wanted to get to this bare kind of skeleton structure of the plant. Just some of these base stems that can hopefully um, make it through and survive. I, I am, you know, a little bit hesitant. Maybe I should have taken off a little bit more, but we'll see. I, I mean, this whole thing is my first time and I'm sure I'll be learning a lot from doing this, what works and maybe what doesn't work. And um, there's a lot of resources out there uh, that can help me troubleshoot and figure out maybe what went wrong, I'm hoping. 
What I'm gonna do now is get some neem oil spray and just spray down the stems and roots. Just make sure all of the aphids for me um, and any other pests that might be um, still living in there or their eggs. By the way, this might seem like such a drastic thing to do to your plant. I've been assured that it will survive. I'm not super worried about taking such drastic measures on my plants because it's the end of the season anyways here. These plants would die anyways. Um, so might as well do all this, take these kind of extreme seeming measures um, and give them a chance to survive. Okay, I have my neem oil spray and I'm just gonna get this completely covered. And now I'll go ahead and pot this up. This might be too big of a container as I was uh, sort of washing off all the soil from the roots, it doesn't look so big. I'll try and spread it out as much as I can. So something to know is I'm not using any fertilizer in this while I'm potting this up. I essentially want the plant to go dormant and any leaves, honestly, that uh, start to grow during the winter or during this time overwintering, I'm just gonna be pulling off until it's about ready for um, me to get ready for them to go out. And so that's probably when I'll also be starting my new round of seedlings for next year, about eight to 10 weeks before the last frost date. And I'm using this Pro Mix that I have, um, like I said, it's open. And I also have a brick of Coco Coir left. And I think I'll use this as well. It'll be good because the Pro Mix has nutrients and, you know, mycorrhizal fungi in it. Um, that might encourage the plant to start leafing out, but this coco coir is completely like devoid of any nutrients. It's essentially just a medium to hold it to keep the roots watered when they need to be. Okay, I have a lot of the coco coir in here mixed with a little bit of Promix, and I'm just gonna let the rest of the brick soak while I get this one potted up. I think this is enough. And before I get the pot too filled in, I am gonna try and spread the roots out and kind of fill it up as I go. So I'm shaking it up as I fill it in, just so, again, all this um, potting medium can get in and inside that big root ball um, and there's not a big air pocket in there or there's not a bunch of roots, hopefully not um, all clumped together. I just put the label in to make sure I remember this one is the ace variety um, I'm gonna finish up with the other three plants that I have and then I'll show you where I'm gonna be storing them So here are my four pepper plants that I've already prepared and potted up. I'll be keeping them in the garage over winter. We keep our garage at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit and four overwintering pepper plants, if you want to keep them dormant and like hibernating throughout the winter, you typically want to keep it in a temperature range of 55 to 65 degrees. You definitely don't want them to experience any freezing temperatures at all. And anything above 65 is just going to encourage them to grow and break dormancy. I'll be checking up on these plants about every couple of weeks from now on and watering them if the soil feels too dry. I think what I've read is that um, they should probably be watered about every two weeks. They shouldn't need much because they are dormant and they're not growing. They just need some water to stay alive. And where I'm keeping them is on a top shelf in my garage. There is going to be a tiny bit of light coming in from the windows on the door. But typically, you do want to give these dormant plants about two to three hours of sun per day. I'll give an update on these plants come springtime when they start to regrow, hopefully <laughs> crossing my fingers. 
um, and I'll let you know how it all goes. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.